Says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. A lot going on there. It's neat to dig into. Verse 11, not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction.
Galatians chapter 3. I'm going to be doing a lot of reading this morning. We're going to start in verse 6 of uh, Galatians chapter 3, and we're going to read to the end of the chapter. Um, so just uh, follow along with me. Just as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, Therefore know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand saying, In you all nations shall be blessed. We are the blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as you as are of the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not of faith, 
but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in, G in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Verse 15. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men, Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is uh, confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as, as of many, but as of one, and to your seed who is Christ. And this I say that the law, which was 430 years later, cannot annul the covenant that was confirmed before by God in Christ, that it should make the promise of no effect. For if the inheritance is of the law, it is no longer of promise, but God gave it to, gave it to Abraham by promise. What purpose then does the law serve? It was added because of transgressions till the seed, capitalized there, should come to know to whom the promise was made, and it was appointed through angels by the hand of, the, of a mediator. Now a mediator does not meditate, a meditator does not meditate for one only, but God is one. Is the law then against the promises of God? Certainly not. For if there has, had been a law given which could have given life, Truly righteousness would have been by the law. But the scripture has confined all under sin that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. But before faith came, we were kept under guard by the law, kept for the faith which would afterward be revealed. Therefore, the law was our tutor to bring us to Christ that we might be justified by faith. But after faith has come, we are no longer under a tutor. For you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if Christ, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. I'm going to read 28 and 29 one more time. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to his promise. Would you bow with me? Our Heavenly Father, we stand here before you humbly and boldly knowing that we are the seed of promise. Dear Lord, that was justified, that was glorified through your Son, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord, for his life, for his death, his burial, and dear Lord, his resurrection. And those of us that believe and have obeyed what you have called us to do, dear Lord, become heirs. Dear Lord, um, your plan, dear Lord, it, it never fails. And dear Lord, uh, we know that you knew that we needed Jesus. Dear Lord, we... We know, we realize that Jesus, his body had to be hung on that cross 
dear Lord, that we could become heirs to salvation. Dear Lord, thank you for making that promise to Abraham that he would be blessed with many nations. And dear Lord, here we stand humbly in your presence. Be with us as we partake, as we center around this memorial, dear Lord, remembering what Jesus has done. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Would you bow with me again, please? Our Heavenly Father, as we continue in this memorial, as we commune together, dear Lord, the power of your word, the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, and dear Lord, esteemed not others, but everyone above himself. So that dear Lord, he said, I will die for you. I will die for those, dear Lord, to bring souls to the Father. Dear Lord, as we partake of this fruit of the vine, we thank you that Jesus said that he would shed his blood dear Lord, that we might live. And dear Lord, pray that we never forget that. Dear Lord, I'm thankful we do this every first day of the week. And dear Lord, I pray that it's not repetition. But dear Lord, it is a renewing of our mind to dear Lord that what Jesus gave for us. Again, humbly, but yet boldly, we pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. This little light of mine, you know that I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, you know that I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine. 